Hello, hello. So today we're going to finish our grand school, so to speak, and learn all about the markings, signage and lighting that you'll find on the taxiways around an airport. So let's just begin by clarifying what a taxiway is. It's simply a path which allows aircraft to travel between the runway, the terminals, parking aprons and hangars. At larger airports, they are usually constructed with a specific mix of concrete or asphalt, which is designed to take the weight of aircraft continually passing over it. So let's start with some basic taxiway markings. You'll notice that all of the markings will usually be painted yellow. First you have the taxiway centre line, which is a single solid yellow line, which simply marks the centre of the taxiway. Next you have the taxiway edge lines. These define the edges of the taxiway and they are solid, double yellow lines. Sometimes a taxiway will run alongside a parking area, like an apron for example. In this case you may find dashed double yellow lines which indicates that a pilot is allowed to pass over the taxiway edge. Another marking you may see is something called the taxiway shoulder markings. These are short yellow lines which sit at a right angle to the edge and they are painted outside of the taxiway. These are usually painted on paved areas which cannot take the weight of an aircraft. These areas are usually built to prevent the ground from being damaged by jet blast. And then lastly, you may see some paved areas with a yellow X on them. These areas again must not be used by aircraft. Now let's take a look at some hold point markings. These indicate positions on the taxiway where a plane may need to stop and wait. The first is a basic taxiway holding point. This is identified with a single dashed yellow line which extends across the width of the taxiway. Next up you have runway hold markings. These indicate a location where an aircraft should hold before entering a runway. These consist of four yellow lines. You have two solid lines and two dashed lines like so. The solid lines indicate the side where the aircraft should hold. For example, if an aircraft is travelling in this direction, it would need to hold and wait for clearance from air traffic control before passing this hold point. However, an aircraft travelling in the opposite direction which is going to pass over the dash lines first, is allowed to proceed without ATC clearance. Now, just as you approach a runway hold marking, you may also see something called an enhanced centre line painted before the hold. This simply adds yellow dashes either side of the taxiway centre line to warn pilots that they are approaching a runway hold point. Typically, the enhanced centre line will be 150 feet long. The final hold marking you may see is the ILS hold line. This marking looks a lot like this. It's kind of hard to explain in words, it looks like a double rung ladder to me, but uh, it does serve a very important purpose. These holds are mainly used in very poor visibility, when pilots who are landing are much more reliant on their ILS instruments. The radio signals being sent out by ILS ground equipment can be disturbed if an object gets too close. For example, if a plane was holding too close to the runway. Therefore, these ILS hold markings are set further away from the runway to prevent any planes or vehicles interfering with the ILS ground equipment and possibly endangering planes on approach. So, that's most of the basic ground markings, but to assist with navigation, there are various signs which are used to identify taxiways, holding points and other key areas. I'm going to try and explain some of the most common signs you'll find. So first, let's start with taxiway signs. Let's imagine that this long taxiway is taxiway Alpha, and then the short one is taxiway Bravo, both of which connect to a runway. Now, as I explain what the signs look like and what their purpose is, I'm going to be putting them in this blue box so you can see them clearly. So the first sign I'm going to talk about is the taxiway location sign, and this shows you which taxiway you're currently on. It will always be a yellow letter on a black background. You'll most often see that sign paired with a direction sign. This is displayed before a taxiway junction or intersection, 
and it tells the pilot which taxiways are at the junction and which direction they are. You'll notice that the colours are opposite to the location sign, so you have a black letter on the yellow background. Now, let's imagine that a pilot is taxiing along here. When they reach this junction, they will see a sign that looks like this. So this sign is basically telling the pilot, you are currently on taxiway Alpha, there is a junction ahead, and you can turn right onto taxiway Bravo. Now, signs like this can be placed on either the left or right side of the taxiway. It is also possible for signs to be painted on the taxiway itself. The colours are the same and the sign is simply replicated on the ground. Now, while we're focused around this Alpha Bravo junction, let's have a look at how a holding point would be identified. More often than not, holding points are simply labelled with the taxiway that they're on plus a number. So in this example, we're on taxiway Alpha and let's say that this is the first holding point, so we'll call this hold Alpha 1. The only difference is that the location side would read A1 at this holding point. So that pretty much covers taxiway related signs, so let's have a look at runway signs. Now when a, run sorry, when a taxiway meets a runway, you will see red signs with white writing. When you approach the hold, the sign will most often have the runway numbers separated by a hyphen. So let's imagine that the pilot was taxiing along and they did turn onto taxiway Bravo, so they're now in this position. They would most likely see a sign that looks like this. First you have the Bravo location sign to confirm that the plane is on taxiway Bravo, and then the runway sign which has the runway numbers. In this example, it would be 09 and 27. Now, if the numbers were reversed like this, that would mean that the 27 end of the runway is to the left and the 09 end is to the right. This helps a pilot identify which direction to turn and which end of the runway is in which direction. I hope that makes sense. Alternatively, if a pilot has already taxied to the end of the runway, they may only see one of the runway numbers, because they can't turn in the opposite direction. So let's imagine that our pilot continued taxiing along Alpha, and went all the way to the end of the runway. They may see a sign like this. A location sign showing Alpha, and a single runway number, 09. Like taxiway signs, these signs may also be painted on the ground. And the last runway related sign you may find is an ILS hold sign, which has the same colour scheme as a runway sign, but simply contains the letters ILS. These will be placed beside ILS hold markings to clearly identify them. So that about covers the basics for signs, and I know what you're thinking, the screen looks an absolute mess right now. So let's turn down the graphics and get some lights on so we can see what the taxiway lighting looks like. So the first set of lights are the taxiway centerline lights, which are steady green lights embedded along the centerline. Next up you have the taxiway edge lights, which are blue and help to define the edges of the taxiway. Now it's worth mentioning that on straight taxiways the lights may be spaced out, but at junctions or intersections these lights may be put closer together to clearly mark the junction at night. Next up you have clearance bar lights. These are three steady yellow lights which indicate a holding point on a taxiway. Usually they sit near the centre of the taxiway. The next set of lights you may see will be the runway guard lights. Now there's two variations of these lights. The first is two sets of two yellow lights either side of the taxiway and these lights alternate slowly like so. The other variation is a row of steady yellow lights, which extends across the entire width of a taxiway. And then finally you have the stop bar lights, which may replace the runway guard lights at a major runway junction, like the far end of a runway for example. These are a set of red lights which extend across the taxiway at a runway hold point. You will also see two steady red lights either side of the taxiway. Now, interestingly enough, these lights can be turned on or off. 
For example, when a plane has to hold, the lights will be turned on. However, once a plane has clearance to proceed, the stop bar lights are turned off, and sometimes a set of runway lead-on lights will be turned on as well. So, I know that might have been a lot to take in, but that pretty much covers the essentials of taxiways. As always, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Now, I'm not sure what my next tutorial is going to be yet. I need to do some research on the PPL curriculum and see if there's any major subjects that I've missed. But, in the meantime, I might do a video or two on some of the goodies that I picked up at Cosford last week. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Take care out there, and I'll catch you all later.